good morning students probably you have seen my previous video on how to hold the bones of upper extremity today i will demonstrate you how to hold the bones of inferior extremity one by one and you know the bones of inferior extremity includes the hip bones then femur tibia patella fibula and bones of the foot so i will show you the hip bone first followed by the other bones how to hold them in anatomical position one by one let's see this is the hip bone there are two bones you know two hip bones one on each side and you have to identify this bone belongs to which side and this bone belongs to which side then i have to hold the bone in anatomical position after that before holding you have to know some anatomical features of the hip bones are the ilium then ischium and pubis of these three parts the expanded ilium will be on the upper side and the ischium and pubis will be on the lower side then of these two parts which one medial and which one lateral of these two parts pubis and ischium pubis facing medially and ischium facing laterally and downwards so to hold the bone in anatomical position now you know which one is upper side which one is lower side then medial and lateral you have to identify how to identify this is the big cavity or called acetabular cavity or simply acetabulum this acetabulum will face laterally so this will be on the lateral side so this will be on the lateral side so now you the upper lower lateral and medial and anterior is the pubis posterior is the ischium now you hold the bone so this bone belongs to right side and this bone belong belongs to left side but how to hold the bone before holding you have to keep in mind the some important points this is called anterior superior iliac spine anterior most point of the ilium and superiorly placed spine so anterior superior iliac spine and this is symphysis pubis the whole part is pubis this is upper border of pubis this is medial border or symphysial border of pubis so this upper border of pubis and the anterior superior iliac spine will be at the same coronal plane coronal plane means this plane is coronal this is sagittal plane this one this is coronal plane so if i draw a plane along this anterior superior iliac spine that plane will be like this this plane and plane of this will be like this but this plane and this plane they are different planes but in anatomical position both the planes will be at the same coronal plane so it should be like this so that both the planes will be at the same level say on, on the same coronal plane this one point second point is upper part expanded upper then this acetabulum will face outwards or laterally and to some extent forward like this can you see downwards laterally and forwards for this bone downwards forwards and laterally and the symphysis surface will be at a higher level than the ischium because the ischial tuberosity will be the lowest point of the hip bone like this so if you hold these two bones on the flat surface it looks like this like this this two symphysis pubis will form a joint called symphysial joint and the ischial tuberosity will touch the ground because it is the lowest point so to hold the bone of the left hip bone like this and right hip bone like this so it's clear next bone i will show you the femur this is a femur of right side and left side two femur and it is the longest bone of the lower extremity and you do you know the longest bone of the upper extremity is the humerus and longest bone of the lower extremity is the femur not only the upper lower extremity is the longest bone of the body is the femur of about 45 cm in length in an adult of about 6 foot height person 
So this bone is the strongest bone of the lower extremity. Then how to hold this bone in anatomical position? So before holding, you have to keep in mind the some important anatomical features. This is the upper end, this is the lower end. Upper end identified by the head and lower end is identified by the two condyles. So now you know upper end and lower end. Anterior and posterior, anterior surface it is to some extent convex and smooth and posterior part or posterior aspect it is concave and identified by a ridge, prominent ridge called linea aspera will be on the posterior side. So anterior, upper, lower, anterior, posterior, then medial and lateral, the head will face medially because it will articulate with the hip bone to form the hip joint. So the acetabulum, if it faces laterally, it should face medially. So another important point for the upper end of femur is the trochanters. This projection, large projection called greater trochanter and small projection called lesser trochanter. Between these two trochanters, there is a line anteriorly called intertrochanteric line and posteriorly this line is called posterior intertrochanteric line or posterior intertrochanteric crest. This is more prominent. So this line should be on the anterior side. Now you have to hold the bone in anatomical position. How to hold? Pick up like this and you hold the bone in this way. So that the lower end it to some extent facing downwards and medially not straight away. It is to some extent oblique. If this is the vertical line and the position is like this obliquely there should be angle formed by this vertical line and the femur. This angle is called angle of obliquity. So this is not a vertical, vertically placed bone to some extent obliquely placed so that medial is lower end medially and upper end to some extent laterally. So you hold the bone in this way. The femur of left side and similarly this is the femur hold like this then you hold like this. So this is the femur of right side upper end sapped and lower end head neck trochanters and here is the two condyles. Now you see both the femur of right side and left side this way. That's all for femur. So next to femur I will show you to hold the bone in an anatomical position of tibia. Two again important long bones of lower extremity right tibia and left tibia and it is the medial bone of the leg. Lateral bone is fibula, medial bone is tibia. And tibia having three parts, upper end, sapped and lower end, you have to identify which one is upper end and which one is lower end. Upper end is expanded having two condyles and lower end is having a process or downward projection called medial malleolus. So upper and lower end is known by the condyles and lower end by the medial malleolus. Anterior and posterior is known by as the upper part there is a tuberosity. You see this is the tuberosity just below the condyle this tuberosity called tibial tuberosity and this border which is very sharp anterior border this one sharp. Anterior. So anterior and posterior known by this sharp anterior border and at the upper end tibial tuberosity. Medial lateral and medial. How do you identify the medial side and lateral side? From the medial side this projection is called the medial malleolus. So now you know upper end, lower end, medial side, lateral side, anterior side and posterior side. Then how to hold the bone? You have to hold the bone vertically. And if this bone belongs to right sided, you have to hold the bone by your right hand this, in this way. So this is the tibia of right side and this is the tibia of left side, upper end, lower end, medially projection from the lower end is called medial malleolus, sharp anterior border. So it is the tibia of left side. So right sided tibia and left sided tibia like this. Next to tibia, another long bone 
of the bone of the leg is a fibula. The two two fibula, very slender bone, not stout like that of the tibia, because the weight mainly passes through the tibia, so it is slender, very thin. So how to fold? Hold the bone in anatomical position. Before holding, you have to identify which one is upper end and which one is lower end. Upper end is known by a articular facet. I am showing you the articular facet. Can you see this smooth one? This smooth part is the articular surface. This smooth part is the articular surface for the upper end. It articulates with the tibia. This projection from the upper end called styloid process. Styloid process of fibula. And from the lower end, this is called the malleolus. This small projection from the tibia medial malleolus and from the fibula lateral malleolus. And this fossa, this depression, this small depression is called malleolar fossa. This one is the articular surface, which is smooth. This will articulate with the talus. So you have to hold the bone. Or you have to hold the fossa by the two fingers like this, like this fossa. So upper and lower end is known by the head and the silent process, or lower end by this malleolus and the malleolar fossa. But the malleolar fossa will be on the posterior side, not anterior side, like this. Now it becomes anterior to the surface. But this is not the correct way. The correct way, this fossa should be posteriorly to this fossa posterior inferior to this fossa. So, anterior and posterior, upper and lower, you know. So, you have to hold the bone, this is a sharp border in this way. This is the fibula of right side. See this fossa, very carefully note this. Similarly, on the left side, this is the fossa, malleolar fossa. This is the articular surface. So, this is posteriorly and to some extent inferiorly to the surface. So, posterior inferior to this surface is the malleolar fossa, which should be like always posterior to this. If I hold this in this way, now you see, now this becomes anterior, but this is a wrong position. The right position is this should be posterior. So, I keep it on the posterior side. This projection, silent process this is the head or upper end of the fibula, is the lower end of the fibula. This is medial side. This is lateral side. So, this is the fibula of left side and this is the fibula of right side. Both the fibula are like this. Another bone is the patella. You know there are two patella, one for the right leg or right side, one for the left side. It is more or less triangular in shape. And it is an example of sesamoid bone because it develops under the quadriceps tendon. And anteriorly it is rough. And posteriorly the upper part it is smooth called articular surface which articulates with the femur, lower end of femur, hair. So that surface should be smooth. Always articular surface of any bone is smooth. So, this smooth surface will be on the posterior surface. But look it carefully, this surface again having two parts, one larger smooth part, one smaller smooth part. In between there is a ridge. This is one is larger, one is smaller by a ridge. This larger part will be on the lateral side, this larger lateral part and smaller medial part and the apex will be downwards. If it is apex downwards, it is the base upwards. So, this is triangular in shape, apex downwards. Similarly, in this bone also, the apex downwards and this is the base upwards. So, anterior and posterior are known by the rough anterior side or anterior surface and posteriorly smooth articular part and a small rough non-articular part. In lateral medial, how you will identify? Laterally, this posteriorly, this surface 
should be lateral part. Lateral surface of this whole posterior part is smooth and it is laterally placed. This smooth part on the medial side. If you keep this bone, suppose this is apex. So, you keep this bone on the table. This apex should be away from you, you like this. So, it tilted on this side. So, that side should be lateral. If you see like this, this larger side, lateral side, tilted like this. Similarly, this bone, this is the apex. So, you keep this bone, the apex facing opposite to you and you keep it bone on the flat surface. Can you see? Or tilting on this side. So, this side should be lateral. You see posteriorly this larger part on the lateral side and smaller part on the medial side. So, this is lateral side, larger part. So, this is lateral, this is lower part apex, this is anteriorly ridges are there. So, this patella should be the patella of right side and this patella, this patella of left side. Just I am showing you, just facing towards you. This is the posterior side, the articular surface, two parts, lateral, larger and smaller, medial. I am turning it again. So, the lateral part larger on the posterior surface. So, this is the patella of right side and patella of left side, patella of right side. This is the anatomical position. I think it is clear. Another bone, not bone, groups of bones, the bones of the foot. Is forming arch called arch of the foot. It is having so many bones. They are small bones. They are called tarsal bones. In the hand, carpal bones, seven carpal bones, uh, sorry, eight carpal bones. And here in the foot, there are seven tarsal bones. This is talus. The largest one is a calcaneum or calcaneus, this one. And this talus articulating with this bone, this is called navicular. And lateral side is the cuboid, this one. And these three bones called cuneiform bone, medial, intermediate and lateral, three cuneiform bones. So, seven tarsal bones and five metatarsal, starting with first, second, third, fourth and fifth. They are named as like this, first to fifth metatarsal bones. Then phalanges. There are total five toes. In the great toe, medial most toe, there are two phalanges only, proximal and distal. And in other toes, there are three phalanges, proximal, middle and distal. So, for these four toes, three into four, twelve plus two phalanges for the great toe. So, twelve plus two, fourteen phalanges. But in the hand, there are 8 carpal bones, 5 metacarpal bones and 14 phalanges. So, only difference is that in case of number, in terms of number of the bones, in the hand, number of phalanges same, number of metacarpal and metatarsal same, but tarsal bones are 7 and carpal bones are 8. This is the difference. And other anatomical difference are there, but in terms of the number of bones, is one number is less in case of the foot. And you have to hold the bone in this way by your left hand because the arch of the foot of the left side because this is the medial side, this navicular bone also on the medial side. And highest point of this arch is this talus, upper surface of the talus. So, I think now it is clear to you how to hold the bones in anatomical position of the lower limbs. So, this part is very important before asking any question, examiner will ask you hold the bone in anatomical position. So, thank you for this for today and next day I will demonstrate you or discuss you some other topic. So, thank you very much.